Hi, everyone. Well, it is May uh, 8. Am I right? No. May 9, 2021. Did you hear about the cyber attack on the Colonial Pipeline, which is, oh, only about uh, 5,500 miles uh, from Texas on up to, I believe, New York? And it's the, the country's largest fuel pipeline. That fuel that then turns into gas in your car, they supply a whole lot of fuel, not just to gas stations. Well, there was a cyber attack, and... They are still mostly closed days after the attack with no timeline for reopening. And, of course, CNN said it was the Russians. It's always the Russians. Okay, I just received this from a subscriber. Think about Event 201. And what happened two months later, it's funny how people are now beginning to uh, post videos, post their tweets in a kind of cryptic way to, you know, make sure they don't say what they can't say anymore. Otherwise, they get... Uh, suspended or terminated from social media. So, if you don't know anything about Event 201, put that in the search bar and search it, and you will learn. And then what happened two months later? Okay, well, I posted a video on the uh, cyber polygon but I took off all of my videos for nearly like one year from the time of the pandemic until uh, I don't, it was nearly a year's worth of videos because I couldn't be bothered going through every single video to see what was Related to, you know, that uh, virus and what wasn't. So, but I did post a video on this article from Event 201 to Cyber Polygon, the World Health, I mean, the World um, Economic Forum's simulation of a coming cyber pandemic. So, this was a good reminder. July 9, World Economic Forum will stage an exercise to simulate a targeted supply chain cyber attack on a corporate ecosystem. Stay vigilant, stock up on essentials, make hard copies of important information. Because, well, why don't we... Listen to the World Economic Forum's video on this uh, simulation that's coming up July 9. The COVID-19 pandemic has shaken our economies and societies to the core and shown us how vulnerable we are to biological threats. In the digital world, similar risks are being overlooked right now. A cyber attack with COVID-like characteristics would spread faster and further than any biological virus its reproductive rate would be around 10 times greater than what we've experienced with the coronavirus. To give you an idea, one of the fastest worms in history, the 2003 Slammer Sapphire Worm, doubled in size approximately every 8.5 seconds, infecting over 75,000 devices in 10 minutes and almost 11 million devices in 24 hours. Fortunately, at least until now, cyber attacks have not impacted our health the way pandemics have, but the economic damages and therefore the impact they have had on our daily lives have been equal and sometimes even greater. You see, 
The only way to stop the exponential propagation of a COVID-like cyber threat is to fully disconnect the millions of vulnerable devices from one another and from the internet. All of this in a matter of days. A single day without the internet would cost our economies more than 50 billion US dollars, and that's before considering the economic and societal damages should these devices be linked to essential services, such as transport or healthcare. As the digital realm increasingly merges with our physical world, the ripple effects of cyber attacks on our safety just keep on expanding at a faster pace than what we're preparing for. COVID-19 was known as an anticipated risk. So is the digital equivalent. Let's be better prepared for that one. The time is now. Okay, so can you imagine uh, another ramification of not having the internet for a day? Oh, that is going to cause an awful lot of heartbreak, frankly, chaos. There are so many people who are addicted to this thing. And the generations that grew up only knowing cell phones and, and this kind of technology, do they know how to entertain themselves without it? Okay, um, I will link below to everything, cyberpolygon.com, July 9. You can learn some of what this simulation is going to be about. But how about we listen to this guy just for a few minutes? I know it's torture, but try to get through it. Because this guy, well, those at the World Economic Forum, they seem to be controlling an awful lot. And, well... If there is, if they decide that they're going to pull off, you know, a cyber attack and suddenly uh, a whole lot of us do not have this internet, we won't be able to stay in touch with one another. We will have no idea what is going on in the world. That is not something I'm looking forward to. And I don't think you should look forward to it either. Um, but the disruption will be in everything. Everything. Supply chain disruption. You can't shop. You can't do anything. It will literally, well, certainly bring Western worlds to a stop. So I really do suggest that if you don't have, you know, the essentials like food and water and, um, well, um, <clears throat> have your cars, you know, um, the tanks full and have some way to give yourself some light, you know, the bare essentials, you know, can you cook without your stove? All of that kind of stuff. But let's listen to this guy. Risks outlook, the third greatest concern for companies so worried is the increase of cyber attacks. We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. We have to ask ourselves in such a situation, how could we let it, this happen? Despite the fact we had all the information about 
the possibility and the seriousness of a risk attack. Cybercrime and global cooperation should be at the forefront of the global agenda. The grim reality is that cybercrime today is definitively a gross industry. It has significant financial costs to the global economy, but it has also important indirect costs. It can undermine the public confidence in digital transformation and therefore into the overall trustfulness of a society. So there is no doubt that building digital trust and a secure internet for the global economy is one of the major challenges that no nation or company can solve alone. It requires a global response. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, maybe they will, maybe they won't. Who's to know? Because we're not in control. But it sure would kill off a lot of people, and it sure would create an awful lot of violence. Oh. And then when you think about mainstream media for the past, uh, I'd say, well, I've noticed, like, within the past two weeks, the headlines. Will it be a summer of violence? Yeah, and I actually brought up a couple of the articles. Um, uh, well, it could very well be. It's set to be a hot, violent summer. West Michigan police brace for violent summer crime wave. Now, the murder rates in cities have really been going up quite a bit. Crime has been going up quite a bit. Funny that at the same time, there's all this talk about defunding the police. Use, use federal relief funds to prevent violence this summer. Oh, and Columbus spending millions this summer to curb the violence and help teams. This is Columbus, Ohio. Um, so, a cyber attack the one in which they're going to be simulating July 9 is the kind that unleashes an awful lot of chaos. So just, you know, I'm not saying that this is going to happen, uh, but these simulations that these psychopaths, you know, um, uh, conduct very often they turn real. So, the, the cyber attacks have been going on. You know, the solar winds, hack attack. Um, and it's always Russia. Russia. It's Russia that did it. The devastating hack on solar winds was quickly pinned on Russia. And CNN pinned the pipeline, the colonial pipeline cyber attack on Russia. Um, Mid-December 2020, a massive hack compromised the networks of numerous U.S. federal agencies, major corporations, the top five accounting firms in the country, and the military, among others. The hack, which affected Texas-based software provider SolarWinds, was blamed on Russia. With no evidence, they never give evidence but it's always Russia. I think those at CNN, they just like, they like saying Russia, Russia, Russia. It's Russia. Likely Russian in origin, likely. So when you hear a likely, mm, they provide no evidence, you can think, well, maybe it's not Russia. Maybe. Maybe it's the United States doing these cyber attacks. Maybe this is just getting us prepared for. Now, when, when we see this kind of cyber, um, these cyber attacks happening now, more frequently, well, hell, 
maybe they're not even cyber attacks. Maybe they're just um, like the Colonial Pipeline, shutting down an awful lot of the pipeline, claiming it's a cyber attack. Yeah, we've got a lot of lying going on. But for the great resetters like Klaus Schwab, they got to destroy the whole system to bring in their system. So that kind of destruction, well, they have to have false flags. So criminal group originating from Russia believed to be behind pipeline cyber attack. No evidence, but it's Russia. But here, th this website, the Daily Swig, Cybersecurity News and Views, you might want to bookmark this just to kind of keep up to date. Telecom industry facing increased DDoS attacks, uh, surge in malware, and cyber attacks set to continue. Europol warns 2021. Ah, so they feed you this information not so much to soften the blow, but it's kind of like cyber attack, cyber attack, cyber attack, cyber attack. Oh, look, pipeline. Oh, we got to close down. Sorry, you can't get any fuel uh, from Texas to uh, New York. And here we are going into this digital world. Once again, we're not consulted in the decisions that they make. That, that annoys me. So I'll link below to everything and you, yeah, check out cyber attack, cyber attack, cyber, cyber, cyber. Okay. By the way, DuckDuckGo browser extension vulnerability leaves edge users open to potential cyber snooping. A whole lot of people believe that DuckDuckGo, you know, just because they say that, you know, it's, it's private, doesn't mean it's private. Understand, Microsoft and Apple, two companies that literally own the world, and Apple I can't remember the percentages, but it was like Apple has 10%, Microsoft has 90%. 90% of the world's people use micro, Microsoft. Now, I don't know if you were around a couple of years ago, but we were all posting videos on the back doors, back doors, back doors into everyone's computer. Why do people think? that there is software out there that they've come up with, it's encrypted, it's private, my computer is safe from Microsoft? It's not. Even if people came up with some kind of encryption that suddenly got, you know, uh, Microsoft a little like, hmm, oh, this is a an interesting encryption. They'd get through it in a day. Proton mail, inherently insecure. Your emails are likely compromised. Your emails are read. Um, no, I'm sorry. You know, uh, they got the best and the brightest of these um, cyber people, computer people, IT people. If they want the information, they're going to get it. They're going to get it. Now, I will link below to this article. Um, I'm not going to, you know, read it. I did, but unfortunately, I took down that video. But I'm sure if you put in the search bar, Cyber Polygon, you'll get something. Now, this is a Whitney Webb article again, and she's writing about this simulation. 
So I really just want to read this to usher in this new and radically different system. The current corrupt system must somehow collapse in its entirety, and its replacement must be successfully marketed to the masses as somehow better than its predecessor. Preter, predecessor. Uh, and that's exactly, you know, if suddenly we're, we're without the internet for a long period of time, they'll simply say, we figured out how to keep everything's secure now and people will just believe it every look they don't have to work too hard at deceiving the public anymore because they're just deceived on their own um so when the world's most powerful people such as members of the world economic forum desire to make radical changes crises conveniently emerge whether a war a plague or economic collapse that enable a reset of the system. So, yeah, be prepared for anything. Um, it's not going to be pretty. So there is a lot in this article, and you can check it out if you're interested we all know but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply transportation hospital services our society as a whole and the COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. Think about having no electricity. Um, no way to purchase anything. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You might want to turn off your internet for a couple of days, see how it feels. Try living without electricity for a day. Well, a whole lot have you know, gone through the power outages. They know what it feels like. Think about all of this happening during the summer. And, well, a whole lot of people have security in their homes, but now you don't. You know, the, the security systems. I don't put anything past these very sick, twisted, evil, um, just utter madmen. So... I don't know what to say. We are living unprecedented time. It's an unprecedented time. And I hope you're all okay. I hope you're all in a relatively safe community. I hope that you have friends, family that you can rely on. I know that a lot of you don't. And I understand that, that that kind of creates an anxiety that is not comfortable. I wish, you know, that the American people were a little bit healthier so that there was a way to establish some kind of, you know, solid foundation within communities, but doesn't seem that they are 
all that healthy. Anyway, ciao guys.